الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Last time we talk about the three first revelations اقرأ المدثر المزمل And the main point here is the first revelation is for the Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم Specify his mission and give him the tools of power and strength. Glorify you, Lord. Rabbaka fakabbir. The first revelation is about what about what this message about? It's message from Rabbuk, your Lord, to the insan, human being, because Allah is the one who created everything. And he had chosen the insan, the human being also. Give them this honor. And he taught human being. Just here for When Allah Taala created Adam. And he said to Malaika. That competition between ma um, uh, Adam and the angels about the knowledge just to show that Allah Taala gave the human being ability to learn. Asma here, there is a long discussion between Mufassirin and historians about what does Allama Adam al Asma mean. My humble view, the meaning here is. It's not specific, this is tree, this is mountain, this is... No, it's the ability to learn and create a terms for complicated idea. That's the feature of a human being. Now, if you look at your memory now, you have a lot of terminology. Complex idea you can just summarize it in one name. For example, when I say democracy, it's just one word. In that one word, there is a lot of discussion. There is a lot of democracy in your head. If you study this before, you know all of this and you can summarize in one word. Freedom. One word. But that one word can explain a complex idea. And the human being also, we understand anything, any idea, and we have this ability to give it name. It's just like keys, these names, keys for huge knowledge. So that's the capability of a human being. They can create more and more and more because Allah Taala created us in this, in this miracle, subhanAllah way. Anyway, the first revelation is about the message from your Lord to insan and some attributes of our Lord and the first command which is Iqra Knowledge is first Second is Muddathir is just to clarify the mission of Rasulullah Warn people and give them what make him strength what, he, what help him to carry this mission Glorify your Lord Purify your soul Be patient Whenever you face in this journey, don't expect something from people. Only deal with your Lord. That's Al-Muddathir. Then Al-Muzzammil is another also command, is Qiyamul Layl. You will face, O Prophet, a lot of challenges. And you as a Muslims nowadays, you will face a lot of challenges. Qiyamul Layl is what gives you strength, power. So that's the command of Qiyamul Layl. Then the command of Kathratul Dhikr. A lot of Dhikr. وَذْكُرْ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ It means anyone who want to call people to the deen of Allah wa ta'ala. It means make effort to work in yourself. Try to have that power with Qiyamul Layl, with Dhikr. Because how can you call people to something you still you have lack of that knowledge. So that's Muzzammil is about this.
We said in Al-Muzzammil, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala mentioned the first name that he mentioned in Revelation, which is, who can remind us? We say, Rabbuka is the first one, your Lord. But the first name of Allah that he mentioned of this revelation is what? Al-Wakil, very good. وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوْ فَاتَّخِذْهُ وَكِيلًا So trust him. You know, wakil, when you trust someone completely, trust also your Lord, because you will face a lot of challenges. So this is the last previous lesson today. Go forward with some examples of the early revelations. Many Mufassireen, they said that the fourth revelation was Surah Al-Qalam. The Surah of the Pen. And this is the first time now Rasulullah Sallam received a revelation start with opening letters. Noon Wal-Qalami wa ma so this is the first time he heard this, Noon. Noon is Arabic letter. Do you have, how many letters we have in Arabic? 29. 28. Two ideas. ulama. Okay, the scholars differ. Okay. Okay. Why some of you say 28? Because that what in Arabic, I think you are our Khairiya, okay. Because Khariya is learned in Syria. All the Arabic countries, they teach in school that Arabic letters are 28, which is not right, unfortunately. They taught us in the school they are 28, but it's 29, not 28. Alif is not Hamza. Hamza is a letter, and Alif is different letter. Alif is harful mad. So if I say Amanu, Amana, Amana, how many letters? Amana. Four letters. What's these letters? Okay, not Alif, Alif. Hamza, Alif. Yeah, that's the difference. Because alif can be a mad for any harf. Ba, ta, qas, sa. Also hamza can go with alif. A. That why it's 29 letters. You know alif, ba, ta. So add for that hamza. Hamza is another letter. So this is the first time in the revelation Rasulullah Sallam received a revelation start with a letter. It's noon. And when Allah say noon, he swear by the pen and what people used to write. It means there's, what does noon mean? We don't know the meaning of the opening letters. There's big discussion between scholars. This is a secret of the Quran, the opening letters. We can try to know, but what does that mean exactly? still beyond our knowledge. The most famous opinion is these letters, it's just only letters, but Allah Taala challenges the Arab people, say to them, this Quran is just from the letters you know. When you speak with those letters to become normal speech, when Almighty speech with this, speaks with these letters, became a divine message and these opening letters if we remove the repetition we will have 14 letters 14 letters Allah wa ta'ala start started 29 surahs 29 surahs in Quran started with letters anyone can give me example So Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, Al-A'raf, 
Then six together. Yunus, Hud, Yusuf, Ra'ad, Ibrahim, Al-Hijr. Then Maryam, next to Maryam, Taha. Then six together again. Shu'ara, Al-Nabl, Al-Qasas, Al-Ankabut, Luqman, Al-Rum, Luqman Al-Sajda. Then after that, you will go to Sad, then seven together, which is all Hamim. Start with Ghafir. Ghafir, Fussilat, Ashura, Zuhruf. Then Dukhan, Al-Jati, Al-Ahqaf. This is seven. And the last one is Qaf and Noon. So 29 surahs. Three of these surahs start with one letter. Qaf, Noon, Sad. Only three surahs. So this is 14 letters. It means the half of Arabic letters. It seems Allah gave us the half and he challenged the human being. Okay, that's your language. This is the half of the letters. Can you brought from that letters something like this defined message? And every surah, why noon here, why qaf? That's all, also another secret. For example, for noon, we found out that the majority of ayatul Qur'an, more than 50% of the ending of verses of the Qur'an end with harful noon. More than 50% in Qur'an of the ayat, ayah end with harful noon. So noon is number one in ending verses in Qur'an when you write it that's noon and we have a lot of also ayat end with tanween you know tanween so tanween also sound like the noon that's why they define it as a noon noon sakina talhaqu akhira al-ismi waqfa la khattan la rasman khattan la ta'biran so they say لقد جئتم شيئا إدا لقد جئتم شيئا إدا so any this تنوين is noon also so noon is number one among the letters to end that's one but that's secret but the point here is Rasulullah SAW received this surah the first time after the المدثر Rasulullah SAW start to warn people not public, everyone he climbed the mountain of as safa and said, I'm the messenger. That's a bit late. But now he warned individuals. When he start warning people, now he received the first, first respond from the Quraysh. That's why Surah Al-Qalam revealed. Surah Al-Qalam revealed to just comment about this response from the Quraysh. That's why, what's their response? Number one, they criticize the Prophet ﷺ himself, and they criticize, number one is the Rasulullah ﷺ, the first thing they said, he is majnoon, he is mad, crazy. That's the first thing they insult Rasulullah ﷺ with. That's why in the beginning of this surah, وَمَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ You are not a mad. You are the best prophet. And we see after that, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You have the best character. So they criticize the prophet. That's the first response. And this response, as we said in the first le lecture of this series, anything happened in Quraysh there is still relevant to our time. When the people receive the message, either they criticize the one who carried the message or criticize the message itself. 
And both this is in Surah Al-Qalam. It means in the beginning they say to him you are mad. And what you brought from this revelation is Asatir al Just myths of the ancient nations. I said this again still relevant. Anyone he will call to Islam, they will criticize him or her and criticize the message itself. That's relevant till nowadays. And till nowadays, Rasulullah still many books from those who reject the message still try to criticize Rasulullah and try to find something in his life. So Allah Tabarakul. So this Surah Noon is the first Surah is comment about this response. We'll found a lot of points in this first Surah. Will explain to us the methodology of the Quran, and that's our Quran will deal with all these things. So point number one. The significance of moral and ethics in this religion. This is very obvious in the early revelation. Not just in Al-Qalam. In all early revelation you'll find something about character. A lot of early revelation will talk that Rasulullah is the best character, he has best character, and those who reject the message, they have bad character. They push the orphans, they just, what they give for money just for show off, the people of the Quraysh, they push the orphans, they don't encourage each other to feed people and when they do it just for show off, slander, they just arrogance, all these bad characters, Allah will address a lot in the early revelation. The point here is the significance of moral and ethics in our religion. It means if you want to call to Islam, ask yourself, Am I ready? How is your character? That's very important. Because the first thing people will say, who are you? They will see this girl or this brother or sister. How they, how they, what's their character? Before they look at the message, they will look at the carrier of the message. That's what happened in the time of Rasulullah and it will happen all the time. And here I want to just to want you to reflect upon this. Rasulullah he lived 63 years. Is that right? Okay. When did he receive the revelation? 40 years old. It means the prophethood is last for 23 years. I always ask myself this question long time ago. The last prophet that Allah Ta'ala will send to all humanity, he will live 63 years and he will receive the prophethood in the age of 40. Why not before that? Then when he'll have time, he will have a lot of time to call people. Only 23 years to change the humanity. And the answer in my opinion is because this 40 years is the foundation of this message. How? Because in this 40 years they saw Rasulullah in different positions. They saw him as a child, as an adult, as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, as a companion, a friend. He saw him travel. 
He saw him as a neighbor. He saw him in different positions and they never criticize anything in his character. The best character. How can a person reach the age of 40 in this pure character and then the first thing he will open his mouth with is this lie on the Lord. We have a lie and say something about the Lord. It's impossible. Point here is, that's why when Allah in the early revelation spoke about this revelation, he will praise Jibreel, the one who carry the message from Allah. But when he come to the Rasulullah he just will say, وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونَ That's it. Your companion is not mad. Full stop. It means you know the Prophet very well. You know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam very well. It's 40 years. You know him very well in all his positions. Since he born till now. Did you find anything you can criticize in his character? <coughs> Relevant now to us. When we call these people to Islam, they will look at our behavior. Before they look at our message, it's amazing message. But the problem is not here. Problem before they look at the message, they will look at us. How is the Muslims? Okay, if there is an area in Manchester, the insurance is high level, so expensive, it's Muslim area. Why? Because sometimes Muslims, they pretend that someone hit him by the car and he will go to a doctor, one of his cousins, and he write down a report that his leg is... He hurt his leg and then he will get 5,000, 10,000 from the insurance. He'll be very happy. And he will tell this to his cousins. It's not one case, one, two, three, four, many cases, then the insurance in that area will go high. When we open our mouths to call them to Islam, the first thing in their mind is this. They will criticize our character first before they look at our message. Before they look at our message, they will say, okay, let us see how's the area with the Muslim. Is it very clean? Which our deen encourage the hygiene and cleanliness in a way unbelievable. They will see at the area of the Muslims. Okay, how is it? So that's the point here is, Allah emphasized the character a lot in the beginning of early revelation. So, he said about Rasulullah وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, you have the best character. They can't criticize you from this. But they just want to debate with you. What do لَوْ تُدْهِمْ They want you to compromise. Don't listen to them. And they count a lot of bad characters of the arrogant people in Quraysh that time. That's our second point here. Those people who reject the message of Allah is not all the people. It's just al-mala. It's just those people who are in high class in society. Very clever. They have a lot of wealth. They control the society. Those people who always reject the message. And the masses just follow them. That's not in the case of Rasulullah only. All the Anbiya. وقال الملأ, وقال الملأ, وقال الملأ. So Mala in Quranic terms means those people who control the society, control the media, especially they, those people who can wash mind all these people, the masses, Quran talk to them in, a lot and debate with them. So the point here is, sometimes your neighbor 
it's just because of Islamic phobia. He's very innocent. He can receive this message. The problem is not here. There's something from the mala. That's why don't give up. Always you have to show your good character and convey the message in the best way. Surah Al-Qalam in the half page is just talk about this mala and their bad character. And then he said in the end that, that we gave him wealth, children, followers, and that's his behavior. He will wait for punishment. Third point. When Allah talked to the punishment to those people, is always Allah is the one who talk, not the Prophet ﷺ. What does that mean? Don't say to anyone, you will get this punishment. No. Quote the Quran. You are a human being like him. You don't have this authority to say to the people, you will be punished. Even the Rasulullah ﷺ, Allah said to him, You are not responsible for the result. You just convey the message. To Rasulullah ﷺ, talk about that. Talk on behalf of the Lord. But we as a du'at, we are not Rasul. We are not Rasul. So don't say, you will get this. No, no, no. Say, Allah Almighty said. That's why in the Quran it's very obvious. As Allah talked, not the Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's point number three. Point number four. The first story Allah Taala mentioned in Revelation is the story in Surah Al Qalam. It's a famous story in that time. It happened in Yemen a long time ago and the Quraysh, they, know, they knew it very well. It's about a very good man, wealthy man. He has a big garden, a lot of fruits. And that old man used to give share of that from that garden to the poor people. Every time. That old man passed away. And now his children inherit that huge garden. They were very arrogant. They swear don't give anything to poor people. We have our children. We need this money. We'll never give them anything. So in the day that they will cut that fruits, they went in the early morning and they encourage each other, don't give anyone to anything to poor people. At that night, Allah destroyed the garden. When they came, Did we lost? Did we lost the, the way, the path for our garden? Can this happen overnight? Then they blame each other, then they try to repent. He mentioned, Allah wa ta'ala mentioned this story, and he said to the people of the Mecca, don't be like these people. What's the problem with these people? They prevent the khair from the poor people. Again, Quran here emphasizes the significance of character and to be good to others. To be good to others again. When Allah Taala talk about be good to poor people, be good to orphans in the early revelation, the majority of poor people that time, Muslims or non-Muslims? Hmm? No, this is early revelation. Muslims are very few. You can number them that time. The majority of poor people are non-Muslims. Allah said, be good to them. That's the first message. When we come to the feed poor people, we don't differentiate between Muslim and non-Muslim. 
That's the need of humanity. If anyone who is orphan or poor or miskin or we need us something, we as Muslims ready. We don't ask him or her about his background or religion. No. Straight away, we are ready for help. Like Dhul Qarnayn and Kahf is from the middle er revelation as inshallah in the future. Dhul Qarnayn, go and help those people. They are non-Muslim. So the first revelation point here is he emphasized that the sign of Muslim that time is just he be he good to the people. He always help those people who are in need. That's the sign of Muslim in the first revelation. Next point. I will end with this before if we can. Oh, I think the people come. Okay, I will end this small and then in the next after Salah, inshallah, remind me, Ahmed, with uh, we'll talk about with the noon, the story of the noon. Okay, anyone remind me of this? But I will end with this. During the surah, when he mentioned Jannah and Nar, the day of judgment, one of the first time also, and the people of Quraysh. They, make fun. they said, if there is a day of judgment, we'll be in the best position. How can you say that? Do you have proof? Do you have revelation from Allah, book from Allah, that you have this guarantee that you will be in high position? Or you just claim, substantiate your claim, prove it. And then, in the end of the surah, he mentioned very important thing. The first prophet that Allah mentioned in this early revelation. There's two opinions between scholars. Is the surah al noon the whole revealed definitely, but or the al-Muzzammil, when Allah mentioned Fir'aun and Musa in al-Muzzammil, which is first. But majority of them, they said noon, wal qalam is the first. It means, no, it means Yunus, Yunus is the first prophet that Allah mentioned to Rasulullah What we want to discuss here after the Salah, why Yunus? Why Yunus is the first prophet? And, when he, when, and why when he mentioned Yunus, he didn't mention his name. He mentioned his name later. But in Surah Al-Muzzammil, he say, hmm. Sahibul Hut. Hut is well. You see, the Sahibul Hut. Why Sahibul Hut in the first revelation? And why the story of Sahibul Hut, Yunus, is very important that Allah mentioned this story in the first revelation? Inshallah Ta'ala, take a break, Inshallah, after Salah, Bidnillah. Just after Sunnah, we'll continue after Salah, Inshallah. الله أعلم صلى الله على عبد رسول سيدنا الحمد لله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so continue our lesson revelation through the lessons of سيرة so we said that سورة القلم is from or the earliest revelation and we mention a lot of points about this سورة to understand our deen and our da'wah and how Quran addressed the first response from the Quraysh to this revelation. Allah mentioned in the end of this surah, Yunus, not by his name, but he said, وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ He said to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَا تَكُنْ Don't be like the man with the whale it means Yunus. Why? Because Yunus, Yunus Allah sent him to his people. He spent ages with his people, called them to the message of Allah. Wa and no one respond. All of them reject the message. Many years. So Yunus thought there is no hope in these people. So he left them 
before he take permission from his Lord. And he went to the sea, to the ocean, and you know the story. And that big well ate the, the Yunus alayhi salam, and he said in the belly of the Hut, La ilaha illa ant, subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Then Allah saved him, and, you know, and he came back to his nation, and when he, once he came back to his nation, all of them became Muslims. The only nation in the past, the only nation in the past, that all of them became Muslims is the Ummat Yunus. The only Ummah, nation before, all of them became Muslims are Ummat Yunus. This is a profound lesson. Allah said to his Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't be in the beginning. It means you will face a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties, a lot of rude response from these people. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Never. Whatever they will do and respond, just be patient, but never lose hope. That's a message from the beginning because, oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you will face a lot of challenges. Some of your companions will kill in front of your eyes. Some of them, they will torture some. You will face a lot. They will force you to leave your country. In the Medina, you will face different type of challenges. Don't give up. You are only a Rasul, a messenger. Your mission is to convey the message. The hearts of the people is not in your, not your business. Guidance, two types. There's a guidance to show the people the path, which is the guidance of Rasulullah and all du'at. And another type of guidance, hidayah to tawfiq, is to bring their hearts to this message. That's only Allah can do it. Even Rasulullah sallam, he can't do it. So he said, don't give up. Convey the message in the best way, but don't give up. You don't know who Allah will guide him, who Allah will open his heart or her heart. Allahu alam. Only Allah knows. That's a very profound lesson. And what I like in Surah Yunus. Surah Yunus came after Surah Tawbah. Surah Yunus, Allah mentioned Yunus only once in Surah Yunus. And not even Yunus. He mentioned his nation, not Yunus. Allah mentioned the nation of Yunus in Surah Yunus in one ayah. Look. The people who reject the message of Allah, the nation of Yunus, many years, Allah didn't punish them. But when his messenger lose hope and left them, he give itab. He gives something to his, to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What's itab in English? He blamed his messenger. I can't say punishment, but he blamed his messenger. Can you imagine? Many years they reject the message. No punishment come to them. When the messenger lose hope, he blamed the messenger himself. In a way that the whale ate that message. Can you imagine? Just to give him lesson. Yunus straight away realized the lesson. La ilaha illa ant. You are the only one who opened the hearts. Inni kuntu min al I understand the message now. He came back to them. One moment, Allah opened their hearts. La ilaha illallah. It means when Allah wants to open the hearts, it's not. It's just one moment. Kun fayakun. So it's a message for Rasulullah sallam and all of us. If you want to call people, never think. That that man, that woman, so arrogant, they will never come to Islam. You don't know. Umar radiallahu anhu, he reject 
the message of Rasulullah six years, six years. Till one of his relatives said, Wallahi la yuslimu Umaru hatta yuslim himaru al-khattab. Umar will never convert to Islam till the donkey of his father became Muslim. That's how they lose hope. And one moment Umar became Muslim and became Umar al-Farooq. So you don't know. So that's not your business. Our business is just to convey the mass in the best way. And the best way here is character first. Before we open our mouths, be a good Muslim. So, وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ came in the first revelation for this. And then, Surah Al-Qalam is from the first. From the early revelation also. Now we move to another surah from the early revelation, which is no specific opinion, which is but they have a bunch of surahs which is in the early revelations. Surah Al-Takweer and then Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Takweer is all about the day of judgment and also about to answer when the people of Quraysh criticize the Rasulullah and criticize the angel who came with this message. So half of Surah Al-Takweer is about the Day of Judgment. But when Allah talk about the Day of Judgment, it's just like you see it in front of your eyes. That's the uniqueness of the Qur'an. That's why instead of tell people about the Day of Judgment, don't use your description. Use the description of the Qur'an and Sunnah. It's so powerful. إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُيِّرَتْ Twelve incidents will happen. Six of them immediately before the Day of Judgment and six of them in the Day of Judgment. In a way, what will happen to the sky, to the stars, to the mountains? And he say, وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ عُطِّرَتْ Ishar is the camels. When they are pregnant, what does that mean? The, the people will left them. It means when day of judgment become very close, the, the, the people, they will not care about anything. All this Lamborghini, PMW, and all, they will not care about anything because it's something serious. So Allah mentioned the day of judgment, and in the Akhirah, he described how the record and our books will open in front of us. What will happen to the sky in that day, to the earth. All these words to say, one day you will meet your Lord and you will open your books and everything you did in this life will be there. That's how Quran describes. No human being can talk like this. In a way of confidence, only the Creator. He didn't argue, oh, day of judgment will happen because, no, no, no. He just gave us image of what will happen like we look at it. And in the half, the another half is about the Jibril and praise Jibril. Let me just focus on this first point. Day of judgment is very important in our religion. It means when you call people to Islam, call them as the Quran called them. Some people, when they want to call people to Islam, they can spend many years in lectures, in calls, without mentioning the Day of Judgment. They say, if I told them this is, became, they became scary. Let me take talk about the beauty of Islam. Birru al-walidayn. Be good to your father and parents. Be good to your neighbors. Absolutely. This is from the early Islam. But that's not enough. You have to talk about the day of judgment. In our nature as human beings, we have this balance. Sometimes we go, when you encourage us, you have Jannah. You have like this. And sometimes we need the other part. If you don't believe, this is the punishment. That's in our nature. Give you an example. If there is no fine, 
if you go and that traffic light, if there is no fine and no camera even, how many of us will go past that? How many of us in the middle of the night or oh, there is no camera? <laughs> but there is camera, oh, that's our nature. We need this. If there is no punishment, then that's why if there is a camera everywhere, people, that's why Islam came to taught us there's two types of cameras. There's inward camera, which is if you fear Allah, you have that camera in your, in your heart. You will never steal, not because camera is there, because Allah is watching you. And the other camera also is important because some people, they will never stop. And we need to apply justice. So from the early revelation, the day of judgment is very important theme. It will come again and again and again from the early revelation. Because of this point, because also the day of judgment. Why again and again that all Juz'amma is just about the day of judgment? Because we live here for very short time. We live there for a very long time. If you have two, if you will live two lives, one of them is very short and one too long, you will emphasize the long one. That's where we will spend ages. Here is just short time. So Allah talk about the day of judgment in details. Because we'll spend there, just in the day itself, 50,000 years. And then Jannah forever, or Nar forever, Na'udhu Billahi min Nar. So that's the day of judgment start now, and with all the surahs after that, many, is about the day of judgment. Again, in a way, with confidence. Not to talk, oh, it will happen, no, it just happened, and what will happen in that day? The second part is the second part is and the day of judgment also if there is no day of judgment then you can't understand the qadar al qadar the, to believe in qadar you can't you can't believe in qadar if there is no day of judgment some of the names of allah you can't understand it till you believe in the day of judgment allah is just adil how can we see some people, they are innocent and they're killed. And the one who killed them is free. There's no punishment. Yes, because dunya is just temporary. We as Muslims believe that there's day of judgment. That's not the end of the story. There's another part of the story. So with this day of judgment, everything will change. When you believe in the day of judgment, Many things in this life will be insignificant for you. That's the importance of Qiyamul Layl. When you pray Qiyamul Layl every night and the Day of Judgment and Jannah and Nar, and La if you recite this every night, during the day, will you care about some insignificant things? Some people, they spend three, four hours about a lot of types of the cars. And what do you think? Four hours gathering like this. If you pray Qiyamul Layl that night, will you spend four hours in this? Everything will become insignificant. If that every single night you have that meeting with your Lord, then you care a lot about how you look, stand in the mirror for two hours. Oh, what's going on my nose? There's something happened here. Oh, oh, insignificant. Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum. Allah doesn't look at your appearance. Look at your hearts. So that's again and again. It's just everything becomes insignificant in this dunya. And you set your priorities. The second half of Surah At-Takwir is about another swearing, but this time about that Jibreel is eligible to convey this message. Talk about Jibreel and about Rasulullah Sallam. Why? Because these two messengers, the angel messenger and the human messenger, 
They are the one who carry this message from Allah to us. So they try, the Quraysh criticize the Jibreel. No. Rasulullah what he saw is just from jinn. He just saw something from jinn. So because of this, Allah, because deniers anything from unseen, they don't believe it. They want to touch something, see it. So Allah said, وَمَا إِنَّهُ It means Jibreel. Five adjectives. Five, number one, Kareem. Owner, honorable. ذي قوة عند ذي العرش sorry ذي قوة it means has full power to carry this message عند ذي العرش مكين he has high status الله تبارك وتعالى give him high status he is the king of ملائكة مطاع ثم there in the heaven he is the master of angels everyone obey جبريل Ameen, and the last one is Ameen. He is honest. He will never change any of this message. And when he comes to that, Rasulullah Your companion. You know him very well for 40 years. He's not mad. And he saw Jibreel in the horizon very clear. He is not from jinn. So that's also another theme which is the messenger and the criticism towards the messenger. Move to another surah, Surah Al-Fatiha from the early surahs. When Fatiha came now, Rasulullah now used to start Salah, Qiyam layl any two rak'az with Surah Al-Fatiha. Which is now the first surah in the early revelation, Allah described himself in details. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise to Allah. And when Allah introduced himself to us, he said the first thing, Rabbul Alameen. The master of all the world. That give you, give the Rasulullah in that time strength. Everything here is insignificant. I am with the one who controls everything. And the Rabb is one of Sifatul Ikram, not Sifatul Jalal. Sifatul Ikram means Rabb is the one who grow you up, the one who take care of you, the one who provide everything for you. Then after that, straight away, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. The most merciful, two names from the same root, Yes, because when you say Allah, the God, then you say, oh, you may be scared. He will punish me. He will do something. Don't worry. He is Rahman Rahim. Malik Yawmiddin, the master of the day of judgment. Again, the day of judgment. And in Fatiha, he gave his Prophet ﷺ and gave us that connection. Iyaka na'bud. Kaf here is a pronoun. When you talk to someone directly, you say, Iyaka. So that's the sweetness. Sweetness of Salah in Surah Al-Fatiha. You talk to your Lord. Some scholars said, if you recite Fatiha quickly, and you don't realize that Kaf, repeat it again. Till you realize that the conversation is directly, Iyaka. نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ The word إِيَّاكَ Allah never mentioned in Quran except in Fatiha. In the whole Quran there is no إِيَّاكَ as a pronoun to talk to someone directly except in Fatiha. In the whole Quran. And Allah mentioned this twice. It's you who worship. It's you who seek help. We worship only you. You talk to him directly. Worship seems enough, but nasta'in. Seek help. Without his help, we can't worship him. 
We are nothing without him. And then guide us. إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path. It seems also enough. But then he carry. صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ نَعْمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ Guide us to the straight path. Then he said the straight of those. Yes. Go on. We have two cars here. It's blocked away. One is... Golf and another one is uh, is Honda. It's Hyundai. Okay, Hyundai and Golf. Yeah, okay. it's uh, silver and uh, red one. Red one and silver. So please, if you can remove your car, just four minutes, we'll finish. Inshallah. Okay, one sister, one brother. Mm. Fair. Okay. Guide us to the straight path. Maybe Fatiha could, could stop here. Guide us to the straight path. But that's not enough. Is it Sirat al The path for those Allah pleased with. Why? Because it's a long journey. You need support. You need com company in this journey. That's the significance of company. That's why Allah Taala put in the heart of the early Muslims to convert to Islam early. Even Rasulullah Sallam at that time need these people, need this company. It's very important because Shaytan, at time it just those who deny the message are vast majority. Even nowadays we need the company. You know, sometimes you're just lazy and when you see your brother or sister, if you are sister, then that encourage you. Just when you see him, he reminds you of taqwa. When you talk to him about Allah, Taala, increase your iman. Company is very, very important. That seems enough also. No, Fatiha still. غير المغضوب عليهم You can't Understand the path of Allah till you understand the path of Shaitan. If you understand the path of Allah and you are not worried about what will Shaitan will do, your knowledge is still. You need a lot. That's one of the main theme of the Quran is to clarify the path of Shaitan. The evidence is. وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ That's why we, 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 we brought ayat for details, talk about the path of shaitan, وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ Then the path of criminals will be very clear. In another qira'a, وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ Then you as a Rasulullah Sallam, or as a reader, the path of shaitan will be very clear. The tricks of shaitan. Not only shaitan, jinn, shaitan is also. The tricks is very important. Then you have basira. You have full sight. Inside you can know, oh. Because the path, and I will end with this, you know the path of Allah is just like a big road. You drive in this road, but when you look right and left, there is a lot of ishlafitat. A lot of signs right and left. All these signs say this is the path of Allah. This is the path of Allah. This is the path of Allah. Come here. Right and left. And it's the path of shaitan. But shaitan will never come to you and say this is the path of shaitan. No. يَلْبِسُونَ الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ He will mix the truth with the false. That's how they deviate you. So they say this is the sign. And the sign will be very nice. With colors, with a lot of uh, uh, decoration, will very nice. Oh, let me go there. So you have to know Sirat al Maghdubi alayhim maraddalim. So this is among the first revelation. Next time, inshallah, we'll continue. Allahu alam wa sallallahu ala abdi rasuli Sayyidina Muhammad.